I'd like to call the 17th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others to succeed. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are eight present. And Alder Person Trester is excused. Please stand and join me with, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is a presentation, a year in review of neighborhood revitalization activities, and Chad Pelichek will be presenting today. Chad? Thank you. So a little bit about where the other people are. Nancy Maring is a staff person in the city development department that's been doing a lot of neighborhood revitalization and happens to be sick today. And Dave Anderson is a code enforcement officer on the south side of Sheboygan. Um, he is with his daughter who recently had a baby today. So um, we'll give him the out today and I'll fill in this presentation. But I just want to mention that uh, Bill Borzeski is in the back of the room. He replaced Bob Wallace and he is the north side code enforcement officer so if you have a district on the north side and you have complaints refer them to Bill and he'll be happy to follow up with those moving into the neighborhood revitalization activities um, what I'm going to do is kind of run through what we've been doing as it relates to the city's strategic plan and then talk a little bit about code enforcement. So we have identified an area of the community, primarily what we would call the central city neighborhoods from an, uh, roughly an area of North Avenue um, and then drew a line basically on 18th Street on the south side. So this red line you see on this map is the boundaries of our five-year plan as it relates to the city's strategic plan. Um, in that plan, we identified the neighborhoods that we're targeting. So the, the neighborhoods on here that are in gray represent the 2017 targeted neighborhoods, and the ones that are in the red or pink represent the 2018 neighborhoods. Um, so the 2018 neighborhoods were Erie Hill, Gateway, Sheridan Park, and Swift. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this without interdepartmental cooperation, so we continue to have uh, bi-monthly meetings of the uh, different departments to identify issues that are rising in neighborhoods. Um, you can see the, the departments that have been in uh, those meetings and involved with the discussions, and we also invite the, land, the Lakeshore Apartment Association, the Landlord Association, to those meetings to uh, give us, we give them 15 minutes in the beginning to talk about any concerns they have. We can share with them things that we're working on, so there's communication between the Landlord Association and the city. Next slide. So what we're doing as part of the um, strategic plan is uh, developing baselines for the neighborhood. So not only are we sending code enforcement officers into those targeted neighborhoods, we're also doing a survey um, and walking parcel by parcel and ranking the condition of the properties. <coughs> Um, we've never done baseline mapping of neighborhoods before, um, so we really don't have a lot of data to see how well we've done and how neighborhoods have progressed over time. So in the targeted neighborhoods, there's a criteria as it relates to the building uh, condition, whether the property has maintenance issues, how the roof is, um, landscaping. So they rank all of those um, different, ent different pieces, and then we map them in GIS, um, which you can see here on the right side of the slide. We map them in GIS with the um, different issues and codes and stuff so that it's, uh, we're developing baselines so that we can go back in the future and see how neighborhoods are doing. So the plan is to circle back to the neighborhoods within the next five years or so and see where, what kind of progress has been made. Next slide. 
We are also, um, we've instituted some lighting. So we've, we hear a lot of complaints at neighborhood meetings about the darkness of our neighborhoods, especially in the center, central city areas. So um, with the help of the police department and the third shift officers, they have gone out uh, both in 2017 and 2018 and mapped areas that are dark. So the darker the blue on this map, the darker the, the street is. Um, so we then went and identified areas where uh, either th there's a, if there was no light present, we worked with Alliant Energy to have uh, lights installed in those areas. And if there was lights present, then we got them replaced or updated or whatever to identify uh, those issues. So we last year spent about uh, 37,000 of block grant dollars putting additional lights in the core central city neighborhoods. If you go to the next slide. So in 2018, 2019, I know this is hard to read, but we went and mapped basically the rest of the, um, looked to survey and map the rest of the central city neighborhoods and the boundary that we're targeting. So um, our goal going forward is to continue to add additional lights in the entire uh, strategic plan area um, so that we can address the concerns of uh, safety at night and, and lights and those types of things. So next slide. Um, we were successful in 2018. Two neighborhoods became associations, the Historic Grant Neighborhood and the Volrath North, North Point Neighborhood Association. And then here's a list of notable neighborhood achievements and events that have happened over the course of the year. Um, everything's from signage to historic walks, cleanups is a big thing, um, adopt a family for holidays, neighborhood planning block parties, um, an aldermatic forum, and then you recently heard about the Adopt a Park pilot program. Um, as it relates to the targeted neighborhoods, we then went back in and identified two uh, really of the worst areas within the a north and south side neighborhood, and two Rock the Block events in partnership with Habitat for Humanity was held. So in the uh, spring, we did the Keeney Court area, and you can kind of see the work that was done and the um, outcome of that. And then this past fall in October, we did the South Side, South, Side, South 9th Street area and did a number of projects as well. So this was a way of trying to take those, those the worst of the worst in that baseline mapping area and trying to bring some fresh uh, new ideas. So that was a very successful uh, partnership with Habitat for Humanity. Next slide. And then we're working with the neighborhood associations to develop, so they all have projects and needs and thoughts and, you know, some of them want to conquer the, the neighborhood and, you know, it's it, to try to get these, these people on, the leaders of the neighborhoods on path to um, understanding what their long range goal is. We've developed what we're calling a plan on a page. So it's a one or two page plan that really identifies um, what the demographics of the neighborhood are, what the income of the neighborhood are, uh, looks at their history and the vision, and then it d deals with any challenges and who's going to be responsible for. So this is the idea of the neighborhood taking responsibility on taking on those initiatives, as well as if they've got initiatives that the city needs to uh, deal with, they can share those with us as well, and we can work together to accomplish the goals of their neighborhood. So the, go the goal is to have every neighborhood association that has an updated plan on a page, if you will, for their neighborhood to work on. Next slide. So looking into 2019, what are we hoping to accomplish? Basically a lot of the same, but um, we're calling it a second wave of the, of the lighting improvements. So we're going to work to uh, get the rest of the lights installed in the central city neighborhoods, continue to establish baselines for our four neighborhood associate, our four targeted neighborhood associations. Uh, there's a initiative with the Department of Public Works to hopefully develop a large item cleanup for neighborhood associations so we can deal with some of the larger trash that we deal with on a daily basis under nuisance and um, sanitation issues. Uh, expansion of the Adopt-a-Park into other neighborhoods. The city has a neighborhood grant opportunity, so we're gonna, we continue to help neighborhoods fund different activities within their neighborhood and then create two more neighborhood development plans. Under code enforcement, so we um, have had two part-time code enforcement officers for the last three or four years. Um, and 
really, I think where where we're at is the fact that um, we've identified a, we've taken care of a lot of the low hanging fruit. Now the stuff that's left is a little bit more challenging and takes a little bit more education to get people to comply. So um, we like to say that in the extreme cases, they're considered neighborhood killers because they really bring down the whole morale and the whole um, you know the whole neighborhood as a whole. So, and and we're if we, with the the concern we have is if we don't address these issues, that becomes the new standard for these neighborhoods and people don't call in and don't complain and they just kind of go on with their life and then that's the way it is. So as, you know, with all these un other initiatives, it doesn't only happen with the uh, building inspection or planning department. We have to work with partnership with the other departments and we greatly appreciate that. Next slide. So focusing efforts with neighbors and neighborhood associations has proven to be successful. Um, and we're at the point really now of spending a lot of time educating residents and property owners on the importance of keeping their properties up. So that's, you know, we may not, our numbers may be lower than um, a couple of years ago, but the ones, that, you know, now it's really about getting out there and making sure that this is sustaining itself so we don't have to continually be doing this. So that's kind of where we're at today. Um, these are just some real quick examples of stuff we see. This was some uh, property on uh, in t uh, January of 2018. So this is their porch in the front of their house. Um, next slide. This is hard to see, but this is a roof that has hardly any shingle, any rocks left on the shingles. You see these these are garages and garages is a is a challenge in alleys and you know areas that are densely platted. So we've targeted garages. Uh, parking on grass is another um, issue. Uh, city ordinance requires it to be cars to be parking on paved surfaces. Um, these are just some examples of houses that. Uh, are under construction or have received orders and that have complied with some new steps and handrails and guardrails and safety and all that kind of uh, good stuff. So the process real briefly is um, we survey the neighborhood, receive a complaint, do a neighborhood walk by survey, a notice is sent. Um, after the notice is sent, there's a timeline to comply. If they fail to comply, we issue citations. Um, and if they uh, ultimately default on those citations, it's in the hands of municipal court to handle and, and the city attorney's office to handle the prosecution piece of it. Our goal is not to be citing. Our goal is to get compliance, but we do get a number of people that just do not respond to us and um, there's, no other, there's no other means of trying to get their attention but issuing a citation. The challenge with that is that the, the citations are 600 and. $81 per violation. So um, it adds up quick. Next slide. <clears throat> this is, this is uh, small, but what I would say is the red identifies the 2018 housing complaints that we've completed in uh, this year, and the blue is the 2018 nuisance. So it's not one particular neighborhood, although there's a stronger concentration in the areas of the neighborhoods we've targeted, um, but it's pretty uh, uniform across the entire city when you take this year's code orders and map them out in GIS to see where we've been. So that's all I have. I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. If not, um, more to come as we move into 2019. Any questions for Chad? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Chad, I just want to ex extend a, uh, an appreciation of what everybody's been doing from code enforcing to working with the, uh, the neighborhoods and, and getting more neighborhood groups together. I think it's very exciting. It's, it's neat to see. You know, you always hear about uh, good areas of the city, bad areas of the city, and it, this is uh, a great tool to helping everybody um, clean up the area. So good job to everybody. Thank you. Alderperson Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Chad, I had a couple, uh, couple of homes in my district, uh, one on 12th and Camelot, that when the previous owner moved out, it was totally trashed. I mean, totally <laughs> trashed. Somebody bought the house, did a beautiful job of refurbishing it, and it went on the market about a month ago for $205,000, and it recently, it recently sold. And then up on my street on Nolcrest Drive, we had a uh, very unfortunate situation with uh, some heroin being dealt, and it was the people moved out, and that house was totally trashed again. 
and the gentleman bought it and fixed it up and I guess at the end of October met all of the new all of the requirements a new roof plus other stuff inside and outside and that one is going to be going on the market shortly so it was a good partnership uh, I enjoyed working with Bob Wallace when he was over there and now uh, Dave Anderson and uh, they've been very responsive whenever I've called about anything in my district so it's been a real pleasure working with them thank you anyone else well, thank you very much, Chad. We really thank appreciate you. this report. Your staff is doing a great job. Next, we'll move on to public forum. There is no one this evening. Okay, and the next item is mayor's announcements. I just want to remind everybody that the sitting hall topping ceremony will be Wednesday, uh, at 12 uh, 5 at uh, 2 30. So I guess this is something that they do in the uh, construction industry when the highest piece of steel goes on a building like this and the, and the steel part of it is finished. They uh, put a Christmas tree on the top of it and so that's very appropriate with the season we're in. I'd also like to remind uh, the public that Pearl Harbor Day observance will be held on Friday uh, the 7th and that'll be held starting at 8.30 at the um, King Park Pavilion. And uh, our transit system has jingle bus tours of Making Spirits Bright. Uh, there'll be two days on Thursday and Friday uh, this week where those will be held. Uh, people should meet at the bus transfer station. Uh, they have two runs every night, one at 6 and one at 7 o'clock p.m. And admission is one non-perishable food item per person. Um, our fire department was very happy to see their new platform uh, truck, uh, ladder truck arrive and it needs to be outfitted and people need to be trained on it so it'll be about a month before it goes into service. Um, and I also want to let the, uh, the other persons know that Sheboygan is a member of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. These are the cities around the Great Lakes in both the United States and Canada. As mayor, I serve as vice chair of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative Board. And at our semi-annual semi board meeting last Friday, they held a press conference uh, to uh, record our opposition to the proposed diversion that's been requested by the city of Racine of Lake Michigan Water. Uh, there's a couple of things that they're concerned about, and that's that, um, first of all, we've been working for a long time with the Compact Council of, uh, of Governors to change their uh, procedure that they go through. And unfortunately, they, they haven't made any adjustments. In fact, in some cases, they've, they've gone the opposite way. But um, we would like to see them have more hearings on the uh, diversions when they come up and we'd like to see a hearing in every state and in each province when there is a diversion request. And there should also be additional opportunities uh, for public comment at those. And also the proposed procedures fail to establish sufficient safeguards once a diversion has been approved. So if there's a certain amount of gallons that can be diverted on a regular basis, there's no way for them to measure and, and, and keep track of that. That needs to be addressed. And they also um, are calling on the governors and premiers to delay vote on this current diversion because they're scheduling it for December 6th. And uh, eight of the, uh, rather five of the eight governors have been replaced now with the elections. And we really feel that uh, the new uh, uh, leadership should take place and they should have an opportunity to understand the issues and then vote on it. And we'll proceed then with the uh, consent agenda. And before we go, I also I missed uh, that uh, Mayor Alderperson Donahue is also excused this evening. So we're on the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.14. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on anything on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> All eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.7 will be referred to various committees. 
Next on resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.7 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 203 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 129 of 1819 by Alder Persons Reinfleisch and Boren adopting the 2019 City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees and recommends to approve the resolution with the amendments to the compensation program. Alder Person Reinfleisch. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? All eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 202 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred resolution number 137 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract or contracts to obtain trees and tree planting services to replace street trees in the city of Sheboygan and recommends approving the resolution. Alder person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, amend the, and a uh, motion to change the seven days in Article 10 and Article 11 of the contract uh, to properly, <coughs> with proper property solutions contracting LLC to 21 <coughs> days. Thank you for that um, um, amendment and support. The amendment is before us for discussion. Seeing no discussion on the amendment, would the clerk please call the roll? All rise. Okay, then the motion is before us as amended. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? All rise. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 204 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance uh, number 26 of 1819 by all the persons Donahue and Sorensen repealing and recreating section 26-227 and reduce standard fees so as to better reflect the actual cost of the electrical inspection program and recommends to approve the ordinance. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. It's before us for discussion. Alderperson Boren. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> I had a question maybe the city attorney or Chad could answer. It's under section 26-27 reinspection and or no-show fees. Uh, reinspection fee is $75 and the no-show fee is $75. My question is, uh, if there is a no-show, that person would be charged $75, but then when they reappear again for the reinspection, would they be charged another $75? Yes. Chad? Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? All eyes. Motion passes. Um, under general ordinances, the uh, items 6.1 through 6.5 will be referred to various committees. 
Next, we'll turn it over to um, City Attorney Chuck Adams to talk uh, about the other matters received after the items was published. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk <coughs> submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, June 30, 2019, and December 31, 2019. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderpersons Donahue and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the agreement for use of subscription material between the Sheboygan Fire <coughs> Department and Lexapol LLC with regard to fire policy manual and daily training bulletins. That will also be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. 7.3 is a general ordinance by Alderman uh, Rinfleisch amending section 82-33 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to amend the positions in the fire department table of organization. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <laughs>